This particular slide talks about those who are outside the church, for those who are not Christian. And so if you are in that category, then Jesus can provide hope for you. In the sense that it is teaching, it is teaching, it is, it is telling us that God cares for us. Then you need not be as a not as a member, as a non-member, you need not be in in a state of constant despair. You can come out of that hole and you can get help in the person of Jesus. But nonetheless, I want you to read one particular uh, uh, passage. Uh, come in. Are you on? Can you read for us Matthew 7, 7 to 11? This is one passage every Christian should remember. You may not quote it word by word, but at least you must remember what is the main point that Jesus was trying to say to his people, to his listeners, in Matthew chapter 7, 7 to 11, loudly and clearly. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and you will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. For what man is there among you who, if the son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, Will you give him a servant? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? So Jesus was trying to get across a very, very important point. By giving them confidence, by giving them hope, by securing them in their in their faith. And he tell the story that the listeners can relate to. Most of the people who are in that audience are parents and they know what it means to love their children. They know what it means to give the very best to their children. No parent on earth, no good parents on earth will ever give lousy things to their children. No way! And so they can relate that. And so, but for you, if you are parents, you want to give the best thing to your children, and but now you parents are children of God. And God is our spiritual spiritual father. And he loves you more. How many early parents can compare with our God, our spiritual father? But spiritual parent. None of us can compare in terms of wisdom, in terms of capability, in terms of power, in terms of capability. Nothing. None of us can compare that. So Jesus is trying to say that, hey, as Christian, as disciple of His, we have God, our spiritual Father, always looking, watching over us, protecting us, and giving us the very, very best. And so for those who are outside the church, Jesus again tells us of God's love, and God's love for the lost. And so if you are in that category, and if you are having a lot of challenges in your studies, in your family, in your whatever life, God can help you. You need not be and you need not remain in the pit or in the hole of hopelessness. You can come out of it. You can get, Jesus can help you pull out of that. But today we want to focus mainly on the, uh, the uh, members of the family of God. So faith in Jesus, faith in God, help us overcome his despair through his promises. God has given us a lot of promises, isn't it? Life on earth, as we covered yesterday, is only temporary. And that should how life on earth be viewed. Because that is the truth. None of us can live long. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how, 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 uh, how authoritative you may be, no matter how rich you may be, life on earth will just be short. 70, 80, 90, the max 100. The max 100 in today's uh, 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 average lifespan. And that is what we should be working towards. Our home, our dimension, that Jesus said he is there preparing for us. That should be our focus. Okay, that should be our focus. Because that is the real purpose for why we continue to remain as faithful Christians. There are a lot of biblical examples in the uh, in the uh, old, both in the Old Testament and New Testament on uh, people who are in a constant state of despair. But somehow they never gave up. 
somehow through faith God will able to deliver them. And so hopefully we can relate to some of these individuals and hopefully we can say when we or should we come across or uh, the time or event where it overwhelms us, then we can say, Ha, ah, Job, Ha, ah, Joseph. So I can also remain strong and I need not be in a state of big despair. Abraham, can you imagine if you are a father and you are in the uh, in the position of Abraham? Only son, at, at least at that time. And God asks you to sacrifice him. What? Oh, 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 oh. wow. Don't know what to say. Don't know what to do. Joseph, he just could not understand why he keep jumping from one hole to another. One hole to another, he just couldn't understand why. Why? Why? The children of Israel, can you imagine again, just like the church camp, alright? We are supposed to, okay, uh, cross and flee from the, uh, from the army of Pharaoh. And the most powerful army is coming behind us, and in front of us is the big lake of the river. Stelion, who might die already, this time sure that happened. That will be the, 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 the general feeling of most individuals. But what, but what did God did to them? In a human mind, that's the end. No more lights in the tunnel. That's the end. Finish. But not in the eyes of God. Not in the minds of God. The same God who delivered the children of Israel is the same God that we are serving to them. And so therefore we should find comfort. No, no one else. No other incident where this particular incident was ever repeated. Parting of the Red Sea. In a human mind, how can water Heart on his own. But in the eyes of God, that is chicken feet. And so that is the same God that we serve. And so therefore we ought to be very, we should be extremely comforted, even though when we find that situation surrounding overwhelm us. Okay? The widow and the son and Elijah at first King 17. Can you imagine? You are situation is so bad that you as a woman, a widow, and your son, you know tomorrow or next day you will die. And you know today will what you have in your kitchen is your last meal. How? The future doesn't look very exciting, isn't it? <laughs> it's not very exciting tomorrow or day after it's not very exciting. You you don't want to get up. You wish that you don't have to get up tomorrow. You wish that there is no tomorrow. But to God again, it's nothing. But to her and the son, it's everything. And God delivered them. God delivered them. And that is again the same God whom we are serving today. Job. None of us will ever find, hopefully, none of us will ever find ourselves in the position of Job. Hang Singh, our dear brother Hang Singh, probably after lunch we will visit him before we go back. He's definitely in a position that many of us do not want to be in, where in order to have your body clean, you need somebody to help you. But our dear brother Han Seng's position compared with Job is nothing. Job lost his entire family, except this one. Job lost all his property. Job lost everything. But Job, at the end of the day, Job stayed truly, truly safe in the what about a New Testament example? Disciples when they were caught in a fierce storm. I went fishing once and it was immersing uh, a romping. Romping there is no island. If you go the further down south to Java side, then you have a lot of island where you can get a lot of shelter, especially when wind blows. And storm like that comes very, very sudden. It comes very sudden. And we were caught once. And I tell you, it was crazy. We were about, I don't know, about one, mile, one hour uh, skip, you know, one hour boat ride in, in the sea. And the storm just came and the wind was blowing and the wave was just like that. And about five of us were in, in that boat and the boat was probably this long, okay, this long. And ooh, it was really scary. It was really scary. But I believe the situation that, they, that the disciples find themselves in Luke chapter 8 was even more scarier. Now remember, 
remember that they were fish, fishermen. To them the sea is nothing. To their storm is nothing. So that particular storm, that oh well, there must be something extraordinary. So much so that they feared for their lives. They were in a state of being hopeless. But Jesus get up, rebuke them, and say, relax. And they calm the storm. And immediately everything stops. So the, the storms of life that may, that may hit you, and if you place our faith in God, should not, should not overwhelm you. And I hope that as we grow, as we grow in age, and also grow in faith, we will slowly learn to be more mature. We will slowly learn okay, to be more strong. The ten lepers, <coughs> they got hope. They got hope anymore at that time. No cure. Ten lepers will ever, will, will be forever ostracized by society. That is why they scream out for help. Help, help, and help. And our Lord help them. Bartimaeus, the blind beggar. To him, life is horrible. Life without his sight is horrible. And he yelled out to God and God, Jesus, help, help, help. And what did Jesus do? Or what did Jesus do? Jesus helped him, Bartimaeus. The man with 38 years of infirmity can't move, get beaten for 38 years. I don't think uh, the 10 lepers, the Bartimaeus, and the, the man with 38 years infirmity were disciples of Jesus. But when even outsiders, when they cried out to help, Jesus, being a very compassionate creator, extended the help needed. And here we are, we are his we are his orphans. We are his more, so, uh, more or less disciples. We have a special relationship with him and with God. So all the more, all the more help is ever there waiting for us if, would, if we would just extend our hand and ask for help. Lazarus, I just love this guy. I know many of us don't think about him. The scripture did not tell us much about him. Why he became a, a, a beggar, when did he became a beggar, how old was he, who his parents were, was he uh, physically infirm that made him a beggar. The scripture did not say anything about him. But he probably re uh, resigned, resigned to his, shall I say, to his uh, fate or situation to be a beggar. Who took him there to the gate of the rich man? No, we don't know. But he never cursed God. At least. He never gave up. That is why that he had a happy ending. He had a happy ending. As compared with the rich man in Luke chapter 16. How many of us are below Lazarus? <laughs> How many of us are equal with Lazarus? Physical man. So we can learn something about this great man, Lazarus. So to conclude this 40 minute short lesson, someone said that life with Christ is an endless hope. We have hope, 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 and more hope. And then finally when life on earth is over, the hope becomes real. The hope becomes reality, no more hope, but becomes reality. However, without him, a hopeless end. So without Jesus, without being a member of the church, without being a children of God, life is without hope. That is why we find so many people having end their life, consciously end their life. Why? Because they do not have any more hope. Whereas a Christian, Christian, we should consider ourselves to be the most blessed individual walking on the face of this earth, having God as our Father. Okay? Having God as our Father, ever watching over us and ever giving us the very, very best. For those who are in Christ, they have every reason to hope. For those who are outside of Christ, then maybe we can understand why they behave like that. Why they act like that. Because they are outside of Christ. Meaning to say they don't have hope. They don't have 
lines, live lines that are available to them. Okay? They don't have people whom they can call and ask for advice. Now in the church here, if somebody got a problem, you can have at least ten, at least ten good brethren here, both men and, 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 and women in the church, that can give you good advice. I had some problem much, much earlier in, in my Christian life. And immediately I thought of Simon Lopez because he's been, you know, he's now 75 and I'm 52, which means he's about 25 years uh, older than me. He has seen through life. And so, whenever I got a problem during those days, I go and approach him. And he has given me some pretty good advice. And that helps. And so young people, when you've got a problem, whether relationship, finance, your career, your family or whatever, call up Uncle Albert, call up Auntie Ivan, call up uh, Uncle Kong Yo, call up Joyce, alright? Call up uh, uh, Alan Quay here. I'm sure they can give you a lot of pretty good advice. And that indeed is a blessing. Did I miss anything? So, okay. So you can choose to be like that. You and your family can choose to be like that. Or you can choose to be like this. So I hope that you will choose the right thing. Okay? I hope you will choose to be like this. Ever smiling. When you, when you come to the church, everybody is smiling at you. Everybody wants to shake your hand. Everybody wants to pat your back. Everybody wants to serve you coffee. Everybody says, when are you going for lunch? Do you want to buy you lunch? Everybody wants to you know, be nice to you. Wouldn't that be wonderful? The church will grow and the church will double up in no time when every member behaves like that. Sincerely. Sincerely. Okay? Let's have, more, let's have some energy up there. You know, every Sunday morning we meet, let's have some energy. Why don't you be the one who gives out the energy rather than you expecting others to give you the energy? Go around, shake hands. In Glen, Stephen Chan has got a very, shall I say, good habit. You know, whenever the service finish, you will always sit in the front. Whenever the, the after the closing prayer, you will go around and, and shake everybody's hand. And welcomes everybody. And, uh, and for those who are having some challenges or problems, you will inquire about, you know, how's their situation and, and how's the problem, do they need any help? Do that. So the church here will be warm. Not only warm, hot. Okay? You have a heart. Church of Christ here in full. And you can do that. It is a choice. Finally, let's get some encouragement from some of the scriptures, more prominent scriptures in the, in the, uh, in the Bible. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. For whom shall I fear? When the righteous cries for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. When I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God, whose word I crave, in God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can mortal men do unto me? Isaiah said, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Peter said, Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you, you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. For God says, do not fear what they fear, do not be frightened. Hebrews said, Hebrew writer said, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted, so as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace in time to help in, in time of need. To uh, grace to help in time of need. So I hope, I hope, I really hope that you have picked up some pointers here and there. I pray that you will not come across great discouragement. And even if you should have trials 
and temptation. As James said, we should look at it from a very positive viewpoint. We should be thankful that we are given the opportunity to grow because only iron can sharpen iron. You sharpen your, your, your knife not with cotton bud, not with cotton wool, not with sponge. You sharpen your knife with a grinding stone or with a sharpening stone. So iron sharpen iron. But however, when we find ourselves in those kind of situations, just fall down on your knees and extend your hand and dear God, please tell me I'm wrong. Thank you very much. And let's have a, let's have a word of prayer, then we have a break, then we have worship. Shall we ask uh, Alan? Alan, please come and uh, lead us in a word of prayer. Shall we stand?